Welcome to CC Biology TCP. I am Mr. Wilson, and you can find us online at tcp-academy.teachable.com. Today, we're going to be looking at the carbon cycle. Our objectives are the role of decomposers, the carbon cycle, source sink, greenhouse effect, global warming, and we're going to be covering content for both biology and HSB for the CSEC examination. What happens to chemical elements obtained by organisms after they die? These elements include the trapped elements like carbon, hydrogen, or oxygen from fats and carbohydrate, etc. Now, CHO and SP from protein are cycled through organism and the environment. The role of decomposers in the carbon cycle. Decomposers are like bacteria and fungi, and they play an important role in the cycling of elements in nature. So when an organism dies, then that organism is acted upon by detritivores and eventually decomposers. And while decomposers are breaking down these organic remains, the process of respiration is also taking place, through which carbon dioxide is released into the environment or the atmosphere. What is responsible for cycling? The decomposers are able to convert complex organic material into simple substances. This is seen in the action of mold on bread, and the production of biogas from domestic organic waste material. Decomposers in the carbon cycle. Decomposers are also involved in the carbon cycle as they release the carbon and methane from the organic remain of dead organisms. And there we're seeing a flow diagram showing the carbon cycle. I will explain it in short order. Now, why cycle? The cycle is important as it makes the element readily available in the environment so other organisms will have it to use. And the cycle could be summarized as carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, getting into plants, then to animals, and then we, we're going to be using these in our life processes, and then eventually we are going to return to the atmosphere. So this is pretty much a summarized diagram of a flow of carbon between the living and non-living world. The carbon cycle at a glance, the carbon cycle is a diagrammatic representation that shows the movement of carbon within our environment. Now, the carbon cycle works through what we refer to as a source and a sink. Now, the carbon cycle can also be seen as a movement of carbon between these two areas, the source the sink. Now, the source would be places where you can get it from. And of course, the sink is, of course, going to be places where it's stored. So you could get carbon from volcanoes, fire decomposition. And sink, during photosynthesis, the carbon is actually stored in uh, our forest, in plants. And of course, it is also stored in fossil fuel and water bodies. Now, the carbon cycle is not the carbon dioxide cycle, which is often confused by students, the carbon cycle is about the element carbon and not so much carbon and the oxygen. Now, carbon is converted in different compounds. Example, methane, carbon dioxide. Uh, we have carbohydrate and fats, and we have protein. So we're seeing those elements represented there and other organic compounds. So we're looking at that C there, that carbon. That's what's moving through the environment. Interestingly, the carbon cycle is important as it shows the movement of carbon through the ecosystem. But the cycling of carbon is important as it makes the carbon readily available for different processes in the environment. The carbon forms a major part of most organisms. The carbon is very important for photosynthesis. And it is also very, very important to maintain 
that balance concentration in the environment as animals are using oxygen for respiration, plants are using oxygen for respiration, while plants are also using this carbon for photosynthesis. If this balance is not maintained, then it could have a deleterious effect on the environment and organisms. Chemical equation to represent carbon as it moves. This represents photosynthesis. So we're having carbon dioxide plus water in the presence of sunlight or light energy from the sun. And of course, this is absorbed by chlorophyll to produce glucose. And now here we have another view. We could look at the worded formula there and the different parts of the formula, the raw material, the condition, and the product. At times we need to know these. How does the carbon cycle work? Process or places that release carbon dioxide to the atmosphere are called carbon source. Wherever you're getting that carbon from is referred to as the carbon source. And these include your volcano, your fires, your decomposition, your respiration, your digestion, and of course, water bodies when warm up are actually releasing carbon into the atmosphere once the water body becomes very warm. Carbon natural sink. Those that absorb carbon dioxide are called carbon sink. And of course, photosynthesis as a process is absorbing carbon dioxide. The forests and trees, those are storing carbon. And of course, water bodies, they are storing carbon as well. And of course, rocks and fossil fuel, they are also storing carbon. So all these are referred to as sinks. Now, this is pretty much a diagram that seems to be a little confusing, a little over the top, as pretty much carbon is always moving in nature. And that is why it seems this way. We are seeing photosynthesis taking place. We are seeing respiration taking place. We are seeing death and decomposition taking place. And we are seeing fossilization as we are seeing the industrial revolution with automation. And also we are seeing there carbon being emitted from the factories and from the fossil vehicles. We are seeing the water there moving. And it is pretty much a major source and the sink for carbon. This animation represents what happens in the cycle as carbon moves through the environment. So we have about 0.03 to 0.04% of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Now, this carbon dioxide enters the plant for photosynthesis. The plant will respire, give off uh, carbon dioxide. The plant will be eaten by other organisms, and there will be a flow of this carbon through the ecosystem as organisms eat. Uh, each other. But then we are going to be having these organisms respiring, and as they respire, they too are giving off carbon dioxide. They ultimately face environmental resistance. They will die, and then decomposers will break down the organic remain to release again carbon dioxide through the process of respiration. Now, those organisms that were not broken down as a result of decomposition, they go through another process referred to as fossilization. And this takes place under very high temperature and pressure. Now, the process will facilitate the formation of fossil fuel in the form of uh, oils and charcoal, that sort of a thing. Now, these fossil fuel will be burnt uh, in factories, motor vehicles, etc. And that too will release carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. So you're seeing their combustion taking place, the burning to release carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So you see there is a complex diagram here that shows the flow. And if you observe, it goes pretty much almost in a circle to show that it's a cyclic movement of this carbon through the ecosystem while it passes through organisms and, of course, the lithosphere. Here is a pictorial of the diagram we're seeing carbon there photosynthesis plants eaten by animal and then we have the death and decomposition by bacteria and fungi fossilization fossil fuel and then we have combustion returning that carbon 
So the processes of a carbon cycle include photosynthesis, feeding, respiration, death and decomposition, fossilization, and combustion. So it could be looked at as a six-year process in getting that carbon to move through the why do we need to understand the carbon cycle? The carbon cycle is always moving. Carbon is always moving in the environment. However, in recent time, man's activity have in, introduced more carbon to the environment than in former years. Or why do we need to understand the carbon cycle? Carbon cycle is always move. Why do we need to understand the carbon cycle? Carbon is always moving in the environment. However, in recent times, man's activities have introduced more carbon to the environment than the many carbon sinks can handle. And of course, they are doing this through processes like deforestation, slash and burn, uh, combustion of whatever source, uh, pretty much removal of water bodies, uh, those things are pretty much contributing to the increase carbon in the atmosphere. Now, to compound the problem, large forest space have been removed for agriculture, other industrial development. Uh, this has reduced the potential carbon sink, making more carbon dioxide available in the atmosphere and then we have many the burning of fossil fuel also component to this problem now this increases this increase sink of carbon in our water bodies has caused the removal of forest area, vegetation, and the continued burning of fossil fuel and other source of combustion would have increased the amount of carbon in the atmosphere, which must be stored somewhere. So this increases the sink of carbon dioxide in our water bodies. And what this would have done is to increase the acidity of the water body. Now, this increase in uh, acidity of a water body is now threatening the life of aquatic organism. Now, the extraction process and use of oil, gas, and coal, uh, we call fossil fuel, are the greatest contributors to the atmosphere problem that we have now referred to as global warming. So the greenhouse effect, what is it really? Now, the heat energy reaching the earth actually bounces back into the atmosphere. However, gas like carbon, or gases like carbon and methane absorb the heat returning to the atmosphere. Now, this keeps the heat trapped around the earth's surface, acting like a greenhouse. Hence the name greenhouse gases. If you observe here, the heat there coming in from the sun, uh, it pretty much hits onto the earth's surface. And then in its effort to go back into the atmosphere, go back into space, what actually happens is that it is bouncing on that envelope of a carbon dioxide, methane greenhouse gases there. And pretty much creating an envelope. You see that blue envelope around the earth's surface thus increasing the temperature of the Earth. Global warming is the enhanced greenhouse effect, which leads to an increase in the Earth's temperature. The truth is, global warming in itself is not so much a problem, because global warming ensures that the Earth is habitable and not too freezing cold. However, when we have the enhanced global warming, the enhanced greenhouse effect, where it's really hotter than it used to be, and this is pretty much caused, as we've just said, by the greenhouse gases, it becomes a problem. When it becomes a problem, we have things happening like the melting of ice cap, flooding of flatlands, 
change in the distribution of organism, possible change in weather pattern, a cool region may become more fertile as the ice would have melt and making space for agricultural production. Now, this could also change the weather pattern, and we have to be cognizant of that and our role in damaging the environment. So as much as possible, we want to ensure that we practice a sustainable agriculture. We want to use alternative sources of energy rather than to use uh, the fossil fuel, which continues to damage our ecosystem. I am Mr. Wilson from CSET Biology TCP. You can also find us online at tcp-academy.teachable.com. Until next time, take good care of yourself. Last year, many students differed on their CXC exams as they were afraid of failure due to their level of readiness. This year, Mr. Wilson and his experienced team from tcpacademy.teachable.com is here to help you get exam ready. Subscribe for free to tcp-academy.teachable.com. We offer courses in CXC Biology, HSB, English Language, and many others. There are several offerings to each course. Enroll in one today.